the, the one thing that all my, the victims I've worked with had, that everybody had in common was vulnerability. And as they pointed out, again, from different backgrounds, and um, when I would train law enforcement, I pointed out to them as well. I said, all of us are vulnerable at some point, all of us. I was a strong cop, but you know what? I was vulnerable when I got divorced years ago. Okay, we're all vulnerable at some point. And just uh, and the traffickers are are not dumb individuals. They're 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 master manipulators, is what they are. And uh, I found that about eighty percent of my cases were them fishing on social media. If I were a trafficker, I'd be fishing for each and every one of you on Facebook, Snapchat, yeah. Instagram, Kick, video games. Okay, any form of this this social media. And they're fishing patiently, like I told you, from four months average that it takes to hook a person. Um, up, it, up to years where they'll patiently wait because you know what and, and and some people say you know what people aren't gonna patiently wait for me for weeks months years yes they will because if they can hook one human being they can sell that human being over and over and over again they can only sell a drug once they can only sell stolen property once they can only sell a gun once but a human you can sell 10 <clears throat> 20 I had a case where they were selling people 30 times a night or a day um, so again it's a very lucrative thing. So yes, and they will, they patiently wait and they're master manipulators and they find you when you're vulnerable. And I did have a case where a, a child, she was 14, uh, a runaway. Um, they, they tend to focus on runaways. Why? Because they have a lot of vulnerabilities. Um, but this, this trafficker, when I arrested him, you know what he said? He said to me, what's the big deal? That's what girls are for. My mom does it, my sister does it. He says, anyway, I figured this kid has probably been sexually assaulted when she was even, when she was little bitty. And I didn't tell him that he was right, but he was right. Um, and he knew because he's a master manipulator and they're there, you know, to see all the, all of the stuff that we're oversharing on social media. So please, even to each and every one of you, go home, check your Facebook, make sure it's set to private. Do you really have 856 friends? Let's pare that down a little bit and let's not share our personal information. Let's get back to old fashioned talking and share if we have a, a problem, let's, let's share it with a trusted individual, uh, not just put it on social media because you know who's want, who wants to know that? The traffickers, okay? Where this handsome guy pulls up and he says to these three 13 year olds, hey uh, girls, here's some cash, go to Burger King, go, go, go buy some burgers and he left, nice, right? They went and had some burgers an hour later, they're walking down the main street and this nice car pulls up, window rolls down and the guy goes, hey girls, get in the car. And they're like, who are you? He's like, I'm the cool guy that bought you the burgers. <laughs> now, not one girl wanted to get in the car, but they all got in. Why? Because they felt like they owed them. And we call that debt bondage. Usually it's something more like, you know, like buying them gifts and grooming. But here, something as simple as hamburgers. That was a minor form of debt bondage. He held that over their heads. Each one got in the car. He ended up taking them to a motel. Uh, one was lucky enough to escape, the other two not so lucky. So something as simple as that. We just need to educate kids and adults how the tricks are, you know I mean? So that is a form of, it's not exact abduction, it's trickery, right? right.